I'm awful. All right. So, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be our round of 16 game. It is going to be Clueless versus Woji Kunan. And we're going to drop and spectate it in just a second here as soon as I... There we go. Spec, drop and specs working now. All right. Great. So, I clicked it. Let's see if it works. Great. It, come on. It's worked for me. I got it. Okay, so. there we go. The chat bands for this game were Ramus, Brand, Timo, and Nocturne. And the in-game yeah. chat bands, it doesn't show those either. They were Nidalee, Cassiopeia, Elise, Trindamir, Jace, and Oriana. Alright, so uh, Valandum, you want to talk about some of those bands and Certainly. talk about um, why you would ban Ramus? either of those, any of those characters? Ramus is a very durable tank. He's got um, very good single target CC if he can get to his target. He's a remarkably good duelist against a lot of the cast because he can mitigate so much burst with his defensive ball curl and it counters auto attackers. And he's just good at ganking bots, setting up jungle ganks, ganking people anywhere. Brand is a very strong AoE mage. He's got burst, he's got kiting, he's got a 2 second stun on a 4.8 uh, second cooldown. Timo is very mobile, he grants excellent jungle control, and he's got good teamfight DPS, and his stun is very annoying for auto attackers. Nocturne is a decent um, fighter. He's got good DPS thanks to his darn steroids and a semi global ultimate, which helps engage on backliners or just get to fights faster. Alright, uh, there's, there's, there's some people asking in the chat uh, why are we casting this game because it might be a stomp. Uh, the reason for that is all of the round of 16 games started before we could get into a game lobby for them, because the, the the game that we were going to cast ended in a forfeit. So we didn't have a game to cast, and all the other teams were told to start their games, except for the game that was going to be cast. Then that one ended up being a forfeit. All the other games had already started casting. So we needed to find a game to drop and spectate that both me and Valandum happened to have the same player on our friends list. We looked at our friends list just real quick, like, who do we have that's the same? And we both have half-hearted, so we just jumped in on him. That's how we got here. We just wanted to pick and grab a game as quick as we could before any of them got too far in. And this one was the uh, closest one to the f to uh, not having started that we could find. So that's how we ended up here, guys. Uh, I'm sorry for the uh, the snafu there, but we had a forfeit and it botched everything for a minute. So sorry, sorry yes, to cut you off there. My Brandon. apologies. All right, looks like we're going to head into the. Loading screen here. Didn't get too much time to talk about the uh, the picks. We'll have a couple seconds. Overlay, can you function, please? There we go. All right, got it. All right, now let's switch over. Here we go. I will right, we'll introduce these two teams here. Um, I will. I'll introduce the um, the bottom lo one. It was a uh, Wodi Kunan. Uh, is the bottom team here. It's Ketson playing as Misfortune, the Mango Effect, hey, I like that name, that's cute, the Mango Effect playing as Lux, Evangel69 playing as Singed, Patrick Owns, Owns with a zero, uh, playing as Garen, and God Commander playing as Mordekaiser. I'm one half of your casters, and casting with me this week is... This is Belandum, and the bottom line... Got uh, top, do the top. Do the top. Yeah, okay, the we've got Half Hearted playing Cassidy, Science playing Wukong, BB Pop playing Amumu, Wolfra on Lulu, and Taihoon on Kazix. I've never seen Taihoon on Kazix or um, BB Pop on Amumu. Yeah, so Amumu doesn't. See I don't think Amumu has a ranged attack. I don't. I'm not. Maybe BB Pop uh, is learning a new character. I'm not. I'm not yeah, too sure. He's what the... known for his AD carry play normally. Um, I've also arranged for us to cast Awesome Explosion plus Volley against We're Pretty Much a Big Deal next round. Okay. And there's a, there's only two picks that I'm really, really interested in talking about here uh, at Champ Select. I mean, Wukong, a lot of these other characters here are great and good, and even Garen's okay. Uh, you know, Mordekaiser bot lane, I mean, Nix87 does, does some of that. I know Sauron's played some Mordekaiser as well. But the two I want to cover uh, as quickly as possible here, um, if you want to talk about uh, Misfortune real quick, and I'll talk about Kasten. 
to try and um, keep it. Miss uh, Fortune short. has good AOE. She combos well, for instance, with Wukong and the Moo Moo. Unfortunately, they're on the other side. Um, and she has a decent slow, and she's quite good at running around the map with her passive, although it falls off quite fast if anything touches you. Lulu is quite good at touching people, and you can't stop Cassidin touching you. Sorry, please go on, Cassidin. All right, and now Cassidin. Cassidin's a character that is very often banned, and this is the first time in a long time that I've actually seen Cassidin slip through the bands in a uh, Dominate Dominion tournament here. Cassidin has extraordinary mobility. He has a very long duration silence. He has a slow. He's really hard to kill. Looking at the other team, they have a silence from Garen, they have the fling from Singed, and they have the snare from Lux. If they land all three of those in a, uh, in a coordinated fashion and let Misfortune just kind of bang bang away at Kasten, Kasten will die. The only problem with that is you run the risk of having Kha'Zix jump out and eat Misfortune while she's trying to do that, or you have to land those CCs, and you have Wukong and Amumu in the way kind of body blocking for that anyway, so it's going to be very difficult for them to apply the CC that they're going to need to kill Kasadin. Kasadin, you can handle him with the right amount of crowd control, but being able to deliver that crowd control is what makes it so difficult to actually employ that strategy. In the chat, ladies and gentlemen, I want to see who do you think is going to die first. I want you to post which champion you think is going to be the first one to take a trip back to the summoner platform as we watch these two teams head on up to the top of the map here. Starting builds, nothing looks too out of the ordinary here. Uh, Catalyst first on Singe, the Blasting Wand first on Lux is a little unusual. Other than that, everything looks pretty standard. Garen going in with a little bit of AoE damage right there. Uh, Cap getting interrupted a little bit late there. Misfortune with the AoE. It looks like half hard. I'm scared for you, man. He's gonna... Oh, there's that flash over the wall. Misfortune picking up the kill on Kasten to really open up this windmill fight. It's always satisfying to see a cast in die. Uh, looks like Kazix is going to get focused down next, and they're cleaning up this fight, although cast in will be up shortly, followed by the rest of his team. Coming back on the field very quickly with that revive. Revive, great spell to have because it helps you clean up this windmill fight. If they did not have revive, they might very well have lost that uh, lost that windmill fight to uh, Misfortune and crew right there. But, since they did have it available, they were able to get Kasten back on the field and up there to stop that. And the Moon was able to finish the capture on that. Misfortune trying to get away right there, but with three characters who have uh, slows and gap closers there, it is a little bit icky down the bottom lane. Lulu and Mordekaiser. Mordekaiser really pushing the creeps up. Lulu doesn't have a lot on that. Mordekaiser coming up to the top here, but coming down for a gank is Kha'Zix and Wukong. Kha'Zix makes for an excellent gank in this game mode. Taking Kha'Zix down in the bottom lane can really snip people up. Lulu getting killed there by the Ignite, it looked like. And the top point is open for right now. Garen and Lux up there at the top, but Kasten is on his way up there to stop that. They did manage to get the neutralized though, so there should be a 4v3 team fight for Ring as Wukong is back now with Mordekaiser. With Mordekaiser dead, Wukong's able to scoot up on point. The ultimate goes off for Amumu right there, and then there's the snare, keeping Kasten locked down for a little while there, but Misfortune was not in a position where she could really do damage to him. Tries to tag him with the ultimate right there, but not able to get enough damage on him to kill him, unfortunately. There goes the slow half-hard, thinking maybe, do I, uh, he's not sure if he wants any of that or not. He probably can kill Misfortune, but if Lux is able to tag him with a snare, and then Garen can follow up with a silence, Kasten will get killed. And very in control of the bottom lane, Wukong and Lulu active on the enemy side of the map near their base. Looks like they're not going to go for the windmill. Windmill too well defended. The team Clueless is going to move around for the drill instead, keeping only Amumu up there to discourage any pushes that they might try to make for the refinery. So we should be able to safely disengage from this fortune of bugs if they try to falsify. Mordekaiser not quite having enough health to go 1v1 on Kha'Zix right there. He got caught a little bit low. Garen going for this point here. It looks like Halfheart is going to go ahead and leave it alone. Let them take that. And Teun opting no, not to recall. He's going to go down to the bottom here to try and gank on Singe. It looks like the Glitter Lance with the slow right there. The fleeing. Teun don't stand in that. Teun don't stand in that. 
top of the map, bad things happen. While I wasn't looking, Lux coming up from behind here does have her ultimate available. Is she gonna try and use to take out Wukong? Didn't get Kasten, unfortunately, and looks like she can pay for that with the silence right there from Kasten. in. She's not able to get any damage off on him to be able to get that kill. Garen completely shutting down the Mumu right there, and Kasten going to... Whoa! That timeline, having the Rift Walk and the damage go off at the exact same time, so he Rift Walked and then died immediately afterward. Garen, no one to contest that, is going to pick up the Windmill, but having this bottom point right here secured makes that Windmill just not too valuable right now. Yes, they have it, but Garen is by himself up at the top with two people coming up there for him. And down here at the bottom, Lulu has been doing an amazing job of keeping this point secured. Yes. Both the people coming for him are melee, though. So if he is tanky enough, she should be able to delay for a while. Red team's patch of the bomb Quest received. Ooh, great bandage toss there by BB Pop Mumu, tagging Lux right there. She gets picked off by the rest of the crew. Uh, she was able to delay for a little while. I don't think Singe get there. No, he's not going to get there in time to stop the point from uh, going neutral. But a neutral point is a good point to have. If the enemy team has the point, that's bad. But if it's neutral, or it's yours, it's good. Don't worry about having a neutral point. In the bottom here, Kasten coming down to help out with Mordekaiser. Tags him with the slow. Oh, and part of the Glitterlands tags him just barely as well. It's turned into a small cat right there, and Mordekaiser gets a free trip back to the summoner platform for his troubles. Miss Fortune checks the bush with her Make It Rain, finds Wukong, and wins the trade because she has Storm Shield. And Miss Fortune there, she's got the zeal, she's got the uh, Zerger's Grief, she's gonna have a lot of attack speed here. But she's still pretty fragile, getting taken down right there in the middle of the map, and there with the Cyclone from Wukong, with the Airborne on Garen as well, to take him out. Singed, over by the drill right now, needs to defend that point, see the red ping going off on the map, letting them know that that's where they need to be. Kha'Zix and Kasten coming down here to the bottom for some ganks right there, and that's a bad position to be in when uh, the, uh, the K brothers come down to let you know what's really going on. Mumu heading down to the bottom point right there. That is the quest objective point. They do want to drive that home because if they are able to, this could be a free 10% damage buff from them. Coming around the back right there, looking for Misfortune. The banish toss does connect there, and Misfortune just gets liquefied at the bottom point right there. There's no one really to, to stop that at the moment. Mordekaiser and Lux heading on up to the top. It looks like their game plan is let's make a mess somewhere else, draw them away from the bottom, and then go and get that point later on. Garen up here at the windmill forces someone to come up and respond. Looks like that is going to be half-hearted uh, on that cast in there, and Tayun Kha'Zix coming up to the top. It looks like Lulu is going to find Lux in the middle of the map, along with Wukong. They are going to pick that off. Having left the bottom point, Misfortune is going to go down there. It looks like she will be able to get that point with all the action going on up top. Mordekaiser is going to die, unfortunately. They're going to get the windmill, and they could make a play for Drill. They have a, they have a fair amount of time left on the resurrection timers in order to turn that neutral. And this is a good split. If you win engagement like that, send someone to one point, send someone to another point, let other people recall. Good play there by Clueless. Lulu trying to capture this point now. Singe not going to have any of that. And like, no, you can't have that. And goes for a poke with Glare Lance, but does not connect, unfortunately. Lulu wisely backing away from the drill now that three members of the enemy team have arrived. She doesn't want to take any of that extra damage. In the bottom lane, however, there's a little bit of action going on. We pick up the Kha'Zix Ghost. Hopefully this will be enough to help beat Half-Hearted. But no, he gets away because he's Kassadin. You see him rift walking. Some people are hating. Kassadin is a tough opponent to track down because of that rift walk and his ability to escape fight. Singed walked into the tower. Very unfortunate right there. He just, he just looked like he was trying to um, you know, maybe get a click off on it or something beforehand, but just wasn't able to do so. Walked in a little bit too far. Unfortunately, they're going to put some pressure on the drill here, but they do have Misfortune and Lux on their way up right away here to interrupt that from happening. There are some minions that the minions are going to push that over to neutral since the champions did get interrupted by Misfortune there. And, oh, the bandage toss from BB Pop connecting with Lux again. And that's an unfortunate thing to have happen there. 
there, spending a lot of focus on Miss Fortune, knowing that she's the most dangerous person on the team, really aggressively taking her out. BB Pop is low on mana, however, but Wukong, with the power-up from Lulu there, able to do a lot of damage, and Singe getting picked off Lulu with the Glitter Lance. Wolfer has been playing a pretty good Lulu all game long. Yes, he has. And Wukong able to get that point. Lulu covered for Wukong right there. Kept Mordekaiser back away so that... Ooh, that, that was painful. Lulu getting a free trip back to the summoner platform. Don't look directly into the laser. Yes. The FCC what, is uh, not okay with that. That's what Lux is blasting off us for. She's rushed this witch cap and it, the AP is showing. Oh, yeah. Uh, and since Lulu doesn't really have any MR to speak of right now, that's... Whoa! Lux's entire health bar turned red, and she got another free vacation back to the summer platform. Singed breaking off, sees, hey, there's a bunch of people here, I'm a fast character, I can go up to the top, so he goes up for the windmill, which pulls a Mumu away from the fight, which makes it, uh, it, which makes Garen able to delay for a little bit longer than he would have, than if he had had that Mumu stun on him as well. Misfortune is able to get there, she takes a lot of damage though, but the, uh, the K brothers over here are really putting the the work over on any target that they can single out. Mordekaiser's shield getting taken away from him right there. Great stun by Amumu. Shield from Lux keeping him alive a little bit longer. See a little bit of that durability from Mordekaiser showing right there, but in the position where he had that many people against him, it wasn't quite enough to keep him alive. See Kelson breaking away from the Kha'Zix chase saying, hey, my teammate has that. I'm going to go ahead and interrupt Wukong instead. That's a good play right there. Does have to do something about these minions, though. Minions make it really difficult to capture a tower. And they don't have control over the Boneyard, unfortunately, though. And that's one of the things that's hurt them significantly in this game, is being pushed out of that point and having Clueless be in a four-cap situation for a large portion of the game. Yes. They're trying to do everything they can to defend at the drill right now. But it's not looking good for them. Kha'Zix, Tehun, stop standing in that. That's the second time. Mordekaiser, hey, we did get this point back. Goes down there, is able to take that. Uh, that's two neutral points. The clock's still ticking down very aggressively right now. They don't have anyone in position to get the windmill, though, and they need that third point to go neutral in order for them to delay the game. But they don't have anyone that can get there, unfortunately. So it looks like this game is going to go to Clueless in this instance after the next couple seconds tick down. That's game. 401 to 0. Yep. This is, uh... Unfortunate, uh... Unfortunately, I mean, that cast and Kha'Zix combo, that's one of the reasons why you have to ban out one or both of those characters, is because both of them make for amazing ganks. Kassin, with that silence, is just so difficult to deal with. And then they had a couple spots that looked alright. I mean, Miss Fortune was able to get some shots in and do some damage, but she kept getting caught out by herself. Un and that just didn't didn't work out. I mean, she had the damage, Lux had the damage, but being able to, they didn't, they weren't able to survive that damage from Kasten and Kha'Zix there. So they always ended up in lopsided fights. They showed some good awareness in fights. Um, you know, like right there towards the end, misfortune letting someone go off to chase Kha'Zix while she went to interrupt Wukong. But just overall, I think it was really comp versus comp, and they just didn't have anything to deal with those two mobility. characters. They just have so much mobility. Amumu has a over 1,000 range gap closer. Wukong has a gap closer disengaged with his stealth. They're just very, very mobile. Um, that really makes it easy for them to jump on people and kill them. Alright, we'll take a look at the graphs here real quick before we go on. That was the round of 16 game. We're going to go on to the round of eight next. Go ahead and look at damage dealt champions here. Kasten, uh, ahead of everyone else there with a 20k. Pretty good. Everyone on his team is up, but you know that's just mostly because they were doing so well there. Yeah. And the interesting thing to note here, guys, I want you to look at this. I want you to look at Lulu's damage. I want you to look at Amumu's damage. Amumu is the tank, but look, look at the margins of damage, like the difference between it. He's very close to other characters in damage because he has so much AoE. And that's why Amumu gets banned out as a tank, because he's capable of doing that. Lulu, multiple target hit with Glitter Lance, and you can fire off a lot of AA while people are crowd-controlled. So, you've got, uh, you've got that going, too. 
So don't when when you see you know Lulu and Amumu on your team, don't think that you're losing damage because they are still very capable of dealing it. And the numbers right here show you show that. You see Misfortune down there. Misfortune you know was was having an okay game, but uh, did get caught out a lot though. Uh, let's take a look at let's see who the graveyard hero is for this game. Look at time spent dead here. Blat. It's like singed strangely. Uh, with the highest time spent dead, with 220 there, a movement with the lowest at 29. So we're going to go dig up a next game out of the ground somewhere, and we will bring that to you in just a moment.